first I want to tell that today we are full of fake prosperity. So what is prosperity when it comes to people or countries? The real prosperity depends on actually people working hard and producing something useful but not from the value of assets especially if the asset prices like the houses, cars are just created by easy money where you create a bubble situation now for example in the United States of America the valuation of the houses have gone up so much because of the easy monetary conditions and now the rent is on the average about 4,500 per month but the actual house which somebody bought maybe say 10 years ago does not provide any additional uh, services to people and we call that kind of prosperity fake prosperity now what happens to the bubbles which people create I would say mainly uh, the central banks create by creating the interest rates artificially low and these as we know in the past from the history of the world always collapse and once that collapses basically the value of these bubbles go away and people lose their capital also what we need to know is once you create bubbles with that comes inflation so anytime any country prints money in excess which had been true for the entire world during the past few years especially after covid which happened in 2020 you get inflation and when the bubbles collapse your inflation may not go away that fast for example, people who are renting their houses are not going to drop the rents just because their house prices go down. Because they're used to having prices going up all the time because it has been easy money for the last 40 years, for example. And therefore, they do not, for example, the landlords are not willing to drop their rent just because the bubbles are collapsing so what happens is inflation continues or we call it it becomes sticky and we know from the past years of inflation for example in the 1970s the textbook scenario is that inflation continues and it's very hard to control even though the economy goes down with it so once again to reiterate the only source of real prosperity is improvement of productivity to generate more goods and services this is a chart from real investment advice about federal reserve and short soft landing scenarios we are always talking about soft landing these days from the mainstream media and everybody just repeats it without actually going back in history and finding out what is the likelihood of a soft landing or a hard landing nobody wants a hard landing but history will tell you that what happens is not what everybody wants and if you look at the historical conditions it's very hard to get a soft landing when the inflation goes up there's an example in 1979 when inflation started to go up but it took many years almost like uh, eight years here or more, uh, even longer and there were two recessions as noted by these gray areas and then again you look at this chart again you can see that when the inflation goes up the Federal Reserve increase the rates 
and then they start dropping but still the inflation continues and the recession comes and that kind of recession is called hard landing we saw one in 1991 recession and we saw the same thing again in 2008 we call it great recession in that scenario inflation went up over five and what happened was another recession although the fed funds were cut while the federal rate cuts their rates recession still comes and stock markets drop, house prices drop and we're expecting a similar case scenario with what historically uh, it's almost inevitable so what are the periods where we had a hard landing with high inflation high inflation we would say about 5%, this in 1948, 1951, 70, 74, 80, 1990, and 2008. And I've showed some of these recent ones in the chart before. So now the currently the inflation is well above 5%. So it's not going to be a soft landing and pretty much a hard landing, which nobody wants, nobody expects. And we don't hear much about that in the mainstream media these days we are saying that the labor market is strong especially in the united states and therefore we won't have a recession and then again historically the labor market looks strong until the recession hits you we are already seeing layoffs happening in many companies we are already seeing people are having a hard time paying their rents Calm, calm prices uh, and mortgages because of the high interest rates and they have maxed out their credit cards already and savings have gone down quite a bit this is not a scenario which usually leads to a soft landing or a recession which will recover fast and with unemployment rises uh, which we are talking about three month moving average of unemployment a recession usually followed and this is happening already and this is the core and headline inflation compared to a year ago the last few months it's coming down and people are cheering that but still on the average we are still about five percent that's still high and this is the wage growth and what happens when you do a certain tightening from the central banks and what happens usually happens mostly two years after and that's the worst time or, th or two quarters after i'm sorry but the effect lingers on until about one year when you get that effect we are still tightening interest rates around the world so the worst effects will be seen usually i would say about two to four months from today and this is an expectation from a major uh, company they expect that the interest rates will come down with the inflation coming down like this over the next few months and this is what happens when the world goes through a recession or we call it a hard landing and this is from Goldman Sachs in other news there was a radioactive capsule being lost by Rio Tonto in Australia so if you are living in Australia you are supposed to be a little worried about uh, radioactive material in western Australia in the Perth area and this is something going on these days about the debt limit so what we can expect from the debt limit is that going forward the worst time for debt limit will come in November, October area 
then uh, we are going to have a uh, higher market deficit financing which is below in this uh, chart and cash balance will run out for the American government and we know that uh, coming a uh, coming few months people are expecting their tax breaks or tax refunds these tax refunds are going to be much lower than before um, because the enhanced child credit is now gone and also tax break for charitable deductions were also killed for this year and some people might get taxes on their investment gains for last year and normally a parent gets about two thousand dollars credit for each of their child but in 2021 the benefit was increased to 3600 for every child under six and 3000 for minor children age six and older but this is gone already so most parents may not see that credit this year in other news inflation in spain has gone up and that may be a harbinger for what to come in the rest of the Europe as well as in the rest of the world. And other news to memory chip suppliers inventory has gone up rapidly, especially uh, people like Samsung company, Hynix, and these are the memory chip producers in the world. They're having problems. Well, in fact, we know that Samsung is losing money on every chip they're producing right now. So, when the stimulus money hit people in America, for example, they were buying things like cars and electronics which need memory, memory uh, items from semiconductor companies. And now, that demand has dried up. And we can see that memory requ uh, requirements, memory demand has gone up continuously over the history of the world. But sadly, there's a big downfall. And this we can expect to happen with uh, other technological companies and may not stop until it hit, hit the baseline because we think this is artificial increase was created by free money or cheap money which is going away. And we heard that cheap equum companies are losing their profits by 30 to 80 percent, their sales by 30 to 80 percent already. And then in other uh, terms, we also look at the demographics. The Congress Budget Office projects that population increased by 14 million by 2030 compared to today. But funny thing is, out of that 14 million, 13 million of that is going to be people over 65 years of age who are not going to contribute much to the GDP or the economy. Nigeria has, Nigeria Central Bank is trying to uh, stop people from using cash and ATM withdrawals. So apparently the Bitcoin price has gone up in Nigeria only to 38,000 a unit, which is about a 60% increase or 60% premium from the rest of the world. And they also asking the Nigerian people to exchange their old higher denomination banknotes for the new currency and the deadline of uh, the deadline is already passed as you can see but what's important is that this is what's going to happen in the rest of the world as well people are going to be having problems withdrawing money they have already in their accounts in cash so this is going to be also happening along the central bank di digital currency which is going to be a common theme around the world the central bank in nigeria for example in february banned financial institutions from providing services to cryptocurrency in at that time also we saw bitcoin going up at 36 percent these are steps they have taken in the last year so 
slowly they were preparing people for these kind of changes which are coming up as economies are having trouble around the world. And when it comes to memberships, the used cars, uh, US auto delinquents are now looking worse than during the great financial crisis like in 2008. And we are seeing the same situation in the housing market as well. And talking about the war situation, one of the generals have warned that we might uh, have to face US versus China war in 2024 because that's the time US and the Taiwan both are going for elections and they'll be distracted and Chinese may have an opportunity to move on Taiwan.